Hello everyone, my name is Brant Kudrowski and this Organic Chemistry Lab video deals with the dehydration of 2-methyl-cyclohexanol experiment. This is part 3, characterizing the products with color tests and gas chromatography. There's some safety items for this last part of the experiment. First, we're going to be working with a reaction mixture that potentially contains 2-methyl-cyclohexanol, 1-methyl-cyclohexene, 3-methyl-cyclohexene, and methylene-cyclohexane. Avoid skin contact with these reagents. Wear gloves. We're also using a test solution of 2% bromine, which is corrosive, it's a strong oxidizing agent, and it's also volatile. You should wear gloves when you're using this test reagent and avoid its vapor. The other test solution is a 1% potassium permanganate solution that's a strong oxidizing agent. You'll also want to wear gloves when you're using this material. Finally, make sure you dispose of the test solutions in the proper waste containers. These should not go in the regular waste containers with general organic waste. They have their own waste containers. Before we start with the characterization of this reaction mixture, it's a good idea to take a step back and recall what happened in the previous step. We started with 2-methylcyclohexanol, which was actually a mixture of cis and trans isomers. These are our two starting materials. We add in an acid catalyst, phosphoric acid, and that set up an equilibrium with several alkene products and water. This is the overall reaction that shows all the possible reactants and products that are present in the reaction mixture. The reaction didn't strongly favor alkenes, so we had to distill off the lower boiling alkenes as they formed, and by Le Chatelier's principle, this was able to drive the reaction to the alkene products that we wanted. The reaction mixture contains potentially five different products, the two alcohol starting materials and the three potential alkene products. Water was removed in a previous step with magnesium sulfate. To characterize our reaction mixture, we're going to do a series of color tests. In these tests, we'll look for the presence of an alkene functional group, a carbon-carbon double bond, using a color change reaction. In the first reaction, the alkene reacts with orange bromine solution to give a colorless addition product. The color change here that you'll notice is orange color disappearing and becoming colorless. This indicates the presence of an alkene. We'll do three tests with the bromine solution, so we're going to prepare three little test tubes here with a few drops of the orange bromine solution. In addition to testing the reaction mixture, we're also going to do a negative control experiment and a positive control experiment. We'll start with the negative control experiment where we put cyclohexane in with a bromine solution. This material does not contain a carbon-carbon double bond. It's not an alkene, so we're expecting it to give a negative test. The purpose of running this experiment is just to see what a negative test looks like. We add a few drops of cyclohexane, agitate the tube, and note the result. Here there's no color change. It remains orange. Next, we'll do the positive control experiment with cyclohexene. This material contains a CC double bond, and it'll give a positive result. We add a couple drops of cyclohexene and note the result. Here, the color goes away very quickly. This is a positive result. Next, we'll do our product mixture, the distillate we collected from the previous step. We'll add a couple of drops of that material and note the result. The color disappears, indicating a positive test. This confirms the reaction mixture contains an alkene, a carbon-carbon double bond. The second color change reaction that we'll look at involves a colorless alkene reacting with purple potassium permanganate solution. Those two react to give an addition product, a 1,2-diol, and manganese dioxide, which is a red-brown solid. The color change that you'll look for in this reaction that indicates a positive test would be the purple solution becoming a red-brown kind of chunky solid. As before, we're going to do three experiments, so we're going to prepare three small test tubes with some potassium permanganate in each. First, we'll do the negative control experiment with cyclohexane. We'll add a few drops of cyclohexane, agitate the tube a bit, give it a good chance to react, and observe the result. In this case, there isn't any color change. It remains purple. There's no red-brown solid developing. Next, we'll do the positive control experiment with cyclohexene. This material contains a CC double bond, and it'll give a positive result. We add a couple drops of cyclohexene and note the result. This reaction is slower than the bromine reaction. We'll need to agitate for a while to be sure we're seeing a result. We can see the purple color being replaced by a brownish red color. That red-brown color is the manganese dioxide precipitate forming. That indicates a positive result. Next, we'll do our product mixture, the distillate we collected from the previous step. We'll add a couple of drops of that material and note the result. After agitating for a while, we can see the color change from purple to chunky red-brown. This is a positive result, and it means alkenes are present. Finally, we'll be analyzing the reaction mixture by gas chromatography, or GC. GC was covered extensively in a previous video. If you're a little fuzzy on how it works or how to operate the GC instrument, check out that prior video and remind yourself of how it all works. Here we're just going to go over the basics and review the general operation. The injector port on the GC is on the top of the instrument. 
Push the needle of the syringe until it bottoms out, then press the plunger down to inject the sample. Press start on the GC instrument, and then press start on the computer on Logger Pro to get the data station collecting data. Here are the retention times for the standards used in this experiment. Again, we don't have a standard of 3-methyl cyclohexene. You'll have to infer its location based on its boiling point in relation to the other peaks. Here's the chromatogram of the reaction mixture in this experiment. With this information, you can identify each peak by comparing its retention time to those of the authentic standards. You can also determine the amount of each by comparison of the integration values of the various peaks. If you found this video useful, check out the next one in the series or watch the prior video. And consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. My name is Brant Kudrowski. Thanks for watching.